It is time now for the Rural Intelligence Report with Mark Williams for Intelligence.com, the one stop we like to go to to find out everything that's going on in our area. Uh, and also take a look at the incredible chronological calendar of coming events, which is very easy to see and go through. And we'll bring in Mark Williams. Mark, nice to speak to you again today. Good morning, Marshall. And it's the beginning of June. I can't believe it already. And uh, we've got a lot of books to talk about and a lot of library stuff to talk about this week, as amongst other things that we normally talk about as well. So, yep, we've got it's all go. Well, June is busting out all over, as the song says, <laughs> and we'll start off on the 4th in Rhinebeck at 6 p.m. at a book launch. Yes, Oblong B Books and Music are launching a book which I feel a bit of a fraud talking about. It's uh, called True Roots, written by Ronnie Citron Fink. Um, and I think it's really uh, a, fun, a fun and interesting story as well. So uh, Ronnie is a local Rhinebeck resident. Um, and a few years ago, she decided to ditch dyeing her hair. Uh, now you know why I'm feeling a bit of a fraud <laughs> talking about this. Anyway, um, apparently when she did this, everyone from friends and family, even to strangers, seemed to ask her all sorts of questions about her hair, why she was doing it and all this type of thing. And she sat back and she decided to write this book. And as I say, it's called True Roots, What Quitting Hair Dye Taught Me About Health and beauty um and uh, she really went from very apparently dark dyes to and you can see a picture of her in rural intelligence to a very uh, beautiful silver crown as it were one way and another um and, and it is an interesting story because in fact there are all sorts of issues around hair dye and all sorts of other issues, um, uh, psychological um, as well. So it's a very interesting story. And we wrote about it in this week in Rural Intelligence in the Rural We section. So um, if, if you're interested, uh, obviously go along on Tuesday, June the 4th to Oblong Books and Music in Rhinebeck. See a local resident, talk about her new book. But before you go, Check out our story and you'll be really up to date with uh, a lot of interesting features as well and the questions to ask her. So, yeah, as I say, Tuesday, June the 4th, an Oblog Books and Music, 6 p.m. On June the 5th in Litchfield, Connecticut, Yoga in the Garden. Yeah, this looked so lovely. I thought, you know, it's a really good excuse now. The weather's getting a bit better um, to relax and enjoy the outdoors. And the White Memorial Museum in Litchfield is having this event uh, at 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Uh, and it, it, as you say, it's yoga in the garden. Um, it's gentle vinyasa yoga. Um, you know, listen to the birds, enjoy, I guess, the morning breezes, hopefully. Um, hopefully celebrate a little bit of uh, the warmth of the sun as well. Um, and after the class, they, they will have a brief sort of guided meditation for those people who want to to uh, participate in that. Um, the whole idea is that this is um, open to all levels, all ages. It's just a really an opportunity to enjoy a beautiful location. There's no prior experience needed. So that's lovely. So that's at the White Memorial Museum in Litchfield, 8 p.m., 8, 8 a.m., 8 a.m. on Wednesday, June the 5th. On June the 6th in Lenox, Massachusetts, Writers once again. Yep, a couple more writers, this time in the Mount. Um, and uh, bringing together Roxana Robinson and Amy Bloom. Um, and they're going to be there to discuss uh, Roxana's new novel uh, called Dawson's Fall. But also, it's very interesting, unusual book. It, they're going to talk about the process of writing biographical fiction. So what's biographical fiction? Well, the, uh, if I explain the book, it'll explain. It, her book is based on the lives of her great-grandparents. So it's based in uh, 1889 Charleston, South Carolina, and it weaves her family's journal entries and letters with a novelist's narrative, as it were. Um, and it spans the life of a really, apparently, a tragic hero, Frank Dawson, um, as he really attempts to navigate the country's new political, social, and I guess moral landscape as well, in in the uh, in the late 1880s, um, so it'd be fascinating to talk about how 
Roxana can do that sort of biological, biographical fiction writing as well as review the book. So Thursday afternoon, 4 p.m. at the Mount in Lennox. We will uh, go from the Mount in Lennox and head over to Williamstown. Uh, yeah, what we could uh, certainly do that because it's going to be the opening, oh, well, little opening event to celebrate the Williamstown Theatre Festival. So the Clark Cart um, on Thursday evening uh, it will be having a lecture and talk by the artistic director of the Williamstown Theatre Festival, Mandy Greenfield. And she's going to be previewing the 2019 season. Um, and it's the... Uh, uh, and, and in fact, actually, I, I think this Wednesday I got the Williamstown Theatre Festival brochure, which came out. But it, Aunt Mandy will be in a position to really talk about um, in more depth about what's going to be on. And then after the meeting, there's going to be a reading also of one of the plays that's going to be on uh, during the season. It's called Private by uh, Morna Pierno, um, and it's directed by Mayna, um, Maya Davis as well. So it's all at Clark Art in Williamstown, 7 o'clock on Thursday, June the 6th. Now, I want to stop here for a second. Did I, freak, I, did I bypass the uh, Baron Worm, sir? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, no, we'll, I can go back to that. <laughs> I'm going to mark this down at 6.33. And here we go. And least we forget, uh, Baron Worm, sir? Uh, okay, you'll have to explain that one to me. Yeah. Well, um, Baron Wormser is a multi-genre writer. He's as much known as a poet as a, as a non-fiction writer, um, but he has a new book out, which, is, uh, which sounds absolutely fascinating. It's called Legends of the Slow Explosion, 11 Modern Lives. And what he talks about in this book is, or he, it describes, is people from the mid-20th century whose lives have created ripple effects um, beyond their individuality, as it were. So uh, the, some of the people he's talking about include, uh, he's written about uh, Rosa Parks, Hannah Arendt, Miles Davis, Audrey Hepburn, um, William de Kooning, and there are, as I say, there's a total of 11 of them. Um, and he's going to be in the bookstore in Lennox on Thursday, June the 6th, and he's going to be talking about his book, talking about the people he's written about, um, and he will be obviously answering questions and, and signing right. copies of it. So that's uh, Thursday, June the 6th, 5.30 in the bookstore in Lennox. Next stop, Lee uh, for a wine dinner. Well, uh, this is a sneaky one. This is my personal uh, expertise coming in here. I've been drinking some really lovely and some very well-priced Uruguayan wine of late. Um, and when I saw this event, which is at Chez Nu, the restaurant in Lee, I thought I'd better mention it because it is really uh, maybe a great opportunity. It's a wine tasting dinner on Thursday evening, starts at 6.30, um, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-course dinner. They really do these uh, dinners beautifully in, at Chez Nu. I've, I've been to them. And they are pairing them, the courses, with wines from Bodega Caru and Chero Chapu, uh, which are apparently Uruguayan wine producing areas and uh, vineyards. Um, it's all going to be explained by Tim Chedwin, uh, Widen, who works with the importer. Um, so he'll be there and he'll be talking about the wines and explaining more about them as you get an opportunity. I'm sure there'll be a wonderful opportunity to buy some wines as well. Um, it, it, uh, and I will, I can confirm that there have been some great bargains and great wines to enjoy from a, a re region that not many people think about um, at all, never mind think about it in terms of wine. So, as I say, Chez Nu, 6.30 on Thursday the 6th, and I'm sure you're going to have to go on and make a reservation to get in there. These wine dinners are really popular. Lennox, Massachusetts, again on June 6th, a novel night out to benefit the Lennox Library. Yeah, well, I mentioned it's books and libraries, and there are a couple of uh, library benefits, and, and the Lennox Library uh, is really a beautiful uh, building and really uh, as an important part of the community and last year they had a really successful 
uh, a fundraising event called A Novel Night Out. Well, uh, this year it's A Novel Night Out Chapter 2, and it's a big dance party under the stars, and it's all to support the library's programming. So that's Thursday, June the 6th, uh, as at Lennox Library. It starts at 6 o'clock in the evening, and again, you're going to have to sign up uh, to get your tickets and enjoy everything. We will head to Steer Galleries on the 7th in Hudson, New York. Yeah, this um, this intrigues me. You know, uh, Stair Galleries has really uh, become a very important feature in the uh, auction world, uh, for particularly for our area. Um, and on Friday the 7th, they're having a, a full-day online auction of prints by a man called Joseph Byers which obviously is not actually in the location. You don't have to be in Hudson at Stair Galleries to do that. But I, I just thought that was interesting. And then later that afternoon, six o'clock in the evening, in fact, there's a big art and design auction. Um, and when I saw some of the um, items that are featured there, I realized that this is going to be quite popular with locals as well. It's uh, works by Eames, Paul McCobb, Mason Jansen, and Edward Wormley. So uh, there will be that will be really popular, and you may well get some bargains. That's Stair Galleries, Friday, June the 7th, and the actual auction itself starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. All right, from Stair Galleries, Berkshire Playwrights Lab, their 2019 gala in Great Barrington. Yeah, we talk about the Playwrights Lab often um, on this chat, and, uh, and, well, they've got to pay for everything, so they're having their big gala, um, on Friday evening at Wyantuck Country Club in Great Barrington. Um, it's uh, their 12th anniversary, um, and the benefit party is an opportunity, actually, not just to have some great food and wine and drinks and whatever it is, but you can m mingle with the artists and, of course, bid on various uh, auction items as well. So, uh, again, you're going to have to check up um, and check in, as it were, uh, before you go, but that's at the Wyantuck Country Club in Great Barrington at 6.30 on Friday, June the 7th. On June the 8th, Copake, New York, an open weekend at Empire Farm. Yeah, the Farm on Foundation is having a big farm tour. There will be various talks. Uh, interesting talk about industrial hemp growing, actually. Uh, um, and there will be a shop for vendors, and there will be the, uh, the big historic barn uh, tag sale as well. There will uh, be an opportunity to harvest your own salad greens uh, just coming in. Uh, there will be picnic opportunities on the lawn. There are all sorts of kids' activities and more. And it's all at the Empire Farm in Copake. So a good excuse to go there, both on the Saturday and Sunday as well. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, runs till 3 o'clock. And the Farm on Foundation is a wonderful foundation to uh, really benefit all sorts of farms in the area as well. So it's a good way of supporting farmers in our area. Well, good talk about a vegetable or a fruit that everybody <laughs> loves or either hates. And let's go on to the Linux Rhubarb Festival. Yeah, is it a vegetable? Is I have. A, now, my grandmother always said it was a vegetable because she used to grow it. But when I used to eat it in rhubarb pie, it didn't taste like a vegetable. <laughs> well, it was an enormous <laughs> amount of sugar, I remember. Yeah. Um, but every year, Lennox has a wonderful rhubarb festival. And this year, uh, it, it will be on Saturday, June the 8th. And yes, I think they have, a, it, it kicks off with a rhubarb pancake breakfast. Um, and then it will be followed by all day long shopping for things rhubarb, including pies, jams. They have that ice cream as well, which sounds uh, suitable. Um, there'd be all sorts of savory, savory dishes as well. Um, I think they even had a rhubarb curry last year. I, I, uh, anyway, it's all done by the local Lennox restaurants who the chefs get together and uh, plan this all. Um, great fun. There'll be um, live music as well from a trombone ensemble. And it's all on Main Street in downtown Lennox. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning if you want that pancake um, and runs till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, as I say, on Saturday, June the 8th. Uh, so there you are, your opportunity for some rhubarb. We will go from Lenox, Massachusetts, all the way down to New Preston, Connecticut. And you've got a couple of events coming up there. Yeah, it's a good excuse to go down to, to New Preston. Um, and there are a couple of things, as you say, on June the 8th. So first of all, 
in George Platfield Privet House, it's having its big annual sale. It, it, they feature all sorts of antiques. And then they have sort of vintage mid-century and modern furniture as well. They've got lighting, uh, if you're interested in that, d decorative accessories. Te there would be designer linens, various tabletop items. Um, and it's all in this big uh, tent in, that, that they set up in the George Platt Field, which is uh, their backyard for the Privet House backyard sale. That starts at nine o'clock in the morning, runs till four. But I also wanted to mention that Jay Sites, which is just next door uh, to Privet, is having a big uh, trunk show as well. It starts at one o'clock in the afternoon, runs till four. Um, but there it will be uh, the Grey New York, Grey New England trunk show. Uh, it's all celebrating the Gay Pride New Preston event. Um, and it will feature all sorts of luxury Italian leather bags and accessories all made in Milan. Um, and a portion of the sales of these items from Grey New York, Grey New England, uh, will be donated to the Tyler Clementi Foundation. So two good reasons to go to New Preston on uh, on Saturday. It's, uh, as I say, it will be the Privet House backyard sale as well as the Jay Sites trunk show. Well, not too far to go to Washington Depot from there. Yep, just down the street. Um, there would be a big uh, book launch, which is really interesting. Tim Street Porter, a lot of people might know because he's a really well-known uh, photographer, particularly of um, architectural items, uh, is going to be there with Annie Kelly. And they're launching a new book at the um, Hickory Stick Bookshop in Washington Depot. Um, it's uh, a book which is completely appropriate for this time of year. It's called Splash, the Art of the Swimming Pool. And it features more the uh, pictures of more than 200 swimming pools, um, including pools, uh, you know, swimming pools from Cher and from Diane Keaton and a whole lot of other well-known people as well. So I thought that would be really appropriate. And if you're going to be staying with someone for the, uh, over the summer, a great book to take as a, as a little gift for them as well. So that's the Hickory Stick Bookshop. The signing starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, on Saturday, June the 8th. In North Adams, Massachusetts, on the 8th, Heirloom by Design Market. Yeah, well, right from Washington Depot, right down in the south to North Adams, uh, I thought was the big move here. So, uh, Greylock Works is really making an impact on the area um, because they have this enormous space in which they can put on exhibitions and marketplaces. And every year they have a big sale uh, in the winter and then again another big sale in June and they bring together an enormous number of Berkshire County's artisans sort of not just food vendors but and chefs and farmers but they have all sorts of other local goods and items made there and uh, this w this year it's on Saturday June the 8th it starts at 10:30 in the morning um, and what they do is they make it a whole day event you can go along and there will be acoustic musicians they're going to be poets uh, reciting there will be lots of kid friendly activities um, and of course you can go there and not just buy things but also um, there will be a lot of opportunities to nibble on items there as well there'll be some food uh, for sale so it's a great event up in Greylock Works in North Adams starts at 10.30 in the morning and runs till 6 o'clock in the evening On June 8th in Washington, Connecticut at 5.30, Library Luminaries Well I mentioned there's been opportunities to support your local libraries uh, this year and the Gunn Memorial Library is also another lovely feature in the area in Washington. Um, and they're having their spring fundraiser. The way they do it is that it kicks off with cocktails at, at the Gunn itself. And then there will be 10 dinners in private homes, all hosted by these generous hosts, um, which is really a lovely feature because you get to see someone's beautiful home, but you also get to sit down and, and meet other people as well, which makes it a, uh, an opportunity to learn about other people and, and meet people as well in the area. So obviously reservations are required, but do check in with the Gun Memorial Library if you want to support it. It starts at 5.30 on Saturday, June the 8th. All right, from the Gun Library, Berkshire Museum, Women in Wine Gala. 
Yep, good for them. Uh, every two years, the Berkshire Museum has this big fundraising event, um, all surrounded by a big wine auction. And this year, their wine and dinner benefit um, is for the museum's education programs. And what they're doing is they're featuring women in wine. So their guest of honor will be Diana Karen, who is a co-owner of Land of Promise Wines in Sonoma, California. And she's also the vigneron at the Terra de Promiso uh, vineyard. Um, one of their special guests will be Ariel Fabiano, who is the head wine mine, winemaker at Balderdash Cellars, who've now just relocated to Richmond, Massachusetts. So um, a local woman in wine. Um, and there will also be additional, uh, there will be lots, by the way, lots of servings of wine with the dinner, which is really a wonderful dinner as well. But uh, more importantly, there will be a big wine auction. So there's a real opportunity to pick up some great wines at great prices. Um, and it's all at the Berkshire Museum um, at 5 p.m. in Pittsfield on Saturday, June the 8th. On June the 8th in Stockbridge, the Berkshire Botanical Garden has their Fête de Fleur. Another big fundraiser. Um, and as you say, it's their annual Fête de Fleur. Um, it uh, is celebrating. And this year, actually, it is a really interesting uh, opportunity this year to celebrate the opening of Lucy's Garden. And Lucy's Garden uh, was donated last year by Lucy and Nate Day. And it's, uh, it is fascinating if you get a chance to see it. It is one of the finest collections of topiaries in North America. Um, and the, the topiaries are amazing in many cases. So it's really a wonderful collection. Um, it starts as a, the whole fundraiser, the Fête de Fleur, starts at five o'clock. Um, on Saturday the 8th at the Berkshire Botanical Gardens and you get a chance to have your photograph taken with some pretty amazing topiaries. But of course the topiaries are going to be there the rest of the year anyway so if you're in the area and, and want a good excuse to pop into the botani Botanical Garden in uh, Stockbridge then uh, go and check out the topiaries as well. But the big event as I say Saturday June the 8th starts at 5 o'clock in the evening. At 6 p.m. on June the 8th, a Close Encounters with Music has their gala. Yeah, down at the Mahewi in Great Barrington, Close Encounters with Music is celebrating Dvorak and Souk, uh, as you say, in their big music gala. And I didn't realize that, but apparently Souk is Dvorak's uh, son-in-law. Anyway, um, it's a good excuse to put them all together. They'll be performing all sorts of works from them. They brought in some, it's an all-star ensemble as well. I won't go into all the names because it mostly because I can't pronounce them. Um, but no, there are some, uh, it's going to be a really wonderful evening. It's all followed by a big uh, patron's dinner at the Stockbridge Club um, after that. So, but it's, it's all, as you say, starts at six o'clock at the Mahewi in Great Barrington on Saturday, June the 8th. And on June the 8th, it is time to celebrate agriculture in Columbia County in Kinderhook. Yeah, the first Columbians have their big annual benefit. And it's, um, as you say, it's celebrating agriculture in Columbia County. Um, the, it's, uh, the first Columbians really uh, are really doing a wonderful big job for this. Um, it's a big spring event. There'll be cocktails, live music. There's a big do uh, dinner on the lawn. It's all at the Van Allen House and Ichapod Crane Schoolhouse in Kunderhook. So a good excuse to support them. And it starts at 6 o'clock on Saturday, June the 8th. We'll move on from Columbia County uh, and uh, head over to the uh, Amenia, New York area. The Boondock Film Society has another event going on. Yeah, they're, they're going upscale this month. The Boondock Film Society is just great fun. They, every month they have a pop-up film uh, event, um, and it's always fun. They, they make it into a big feature. And this year, as I say, they are really going up, ta um, up market because they are partnering with the luxury hotel Troutbeck um, for a screening of the now I'm Baumbach's 2004 12 film which is a lovely lovely film called francis ha and it really is beautiful it's um and what they're going to do is um they're going to proceed the um showing um with a big 
special dance performance as well. So it, they do make these events into a really fun thing. So it will be great fun. So uh, um, it's all choreo. Uh, by the way, the dance itself is going to be choreographed by uh, Jeanne Burley and Alex Springer, who actually put the dance sequence that uh, is in the film um uh, the, they actually choreographed that as well so um it's great fun they've brought they're bringing in some dancers to perform this um and uh, then there will be a question and answer and of course then there will be the film so great fun event at troutbeck uh saturday june the 8th at the boondocks film society it starts at 7 30 in the evening on the 9th let's go to hinsdale massachusetts well, we've got to get out and about. And uh, the Old Mill uh, Trail Party is at 10 o'clock, starts at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, June the 9th. The Berkshire Natural Resources Council is having an all-ages event to celebrate and generate support for this really interesting riverside trail in the woods. Um, so it's a chance, to, an opportunity, as it were, to go along and enjoy a guided hike, there will be live music from the Housatonic Philharmonic um, by the side of the river as well. Um, and there will be food provided by the Hinsdale Trading Company. Um, it starts, the event starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. Do go onto the Berkshire Natural Resources Council website via Rural Intelligence for all of the details and the timings and whatever it is and the exact location of the Old Mill Trail uh, but it sounds like it's going to be a lovely party to uh, to start the day on Sunday, June the 9th. And hard to believe, but Music Mountain will be opening up the season on June 9th uh, with their opener with uh, Peter Serkin. Yes, it's the 90th season, so it's going to be a big event. Um, Peter Serkin is, uh, as you say, is starting it. There's going to be the violinist Alexi Kenny. Fred Sherry will be on the pia on the cello. Um, and they're going to be a big performance of works by Beethoven, Brahms, and Schoenberg. Uh, as it's, it's at Music Mountain, Falls Village, and starts at 3 o'clock on Sunday, June the 9th. And we will wrap things up in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, with Common Ground. Well, I had to, I had to include this, and I'll explain why. At Hevra in, of Southern Berkshire in Great Barrington, at 7 o'clock in the evening, they're bringing together the jazz singer Wanda Houston with the clarinetist Paul Green, and they're going to be presenting a program that fuses jazz and Jewish music together, um, reflecting the long-standing fellowship between the African-American and Jewish communities in America. The concert is a benefit for a really interesting project that's going on in Great Barrington. I'm not sure how well people know about this, but they are restoring the Clinton Church, which is a really historic um, African Methodist Episcopal a Zion Church in downtown Great Barrington. It was a really important part of the African-American heritage in the area, and they're going to make it into a big uh, visitor center and community space. Um, they're, they're having this wonderful jazz um, evening event to go with it. Um, uh, there'll be a big reception afterwards. And, of course, one of the reasons I mention it is um, I'm fascinated by the actually by this new Clinton Church restoration anyway. But on top of that, of course, we're very biased because we're big fans of Paul Green, who is the husband of um, our editor at Rural Intelligence, Lisa Green. Um, so we'll be along supporting him on Sunday, June the 9th at Hevra of South Berkshire. Starts at 7 o'clock in the evening. Just another not-so-busy week in our tri-state region, but, of course, what you'll hear here is just a snippet of what you'll find at ruralintelligence.com. Mark, we'll speak to you again next week. And I will look forward to it. Thanks, Marshall.